Hi, I'm Sarah and welcome back to the series where I'm training to run my first ever marathon. Now, as I film this, there are just two weeks to go until race day and that means one thing, it's time to taper. Now, I'm sure like many of you out there, I've uh, never really tapered before. So this is gonna be a bit of a learning curve, but thankfully I've got the Running Channel team and you lovely people, the Running Channel community to help get me through it with lots of great tips and advice. So stay tuned for some taper tips. We're gonna go through how to tackle the final runs in the lead up to the race and most importantly how to stay calm in the lead up to the marathon day itself and what better way to go through it all than on one of my last long runs so let's go do it So let's start off by going through what tapering actually is. And what tapering means is gradually reducing your training in the lead up to race day to ensure that you are rested and recovered. Now, this might not seem natural to ease off just as race day approaches and everything else is kind of ramping up, but tapering is really key to ensure that you can hit peak speed and endurance on race day itself. And don't just take my word for it, because this is exactly what the elites do as well. So Kipchoge will have tapered before his two hour attempt. I don't think any amount of tapering is going to make me that fast though. My taper period started last weekend with my last long run before race day, which was a half marathon. And now all of my runs are shorter than that leading up to the race. You might find though that some plans are longer or shorter, but they'll all gradually start to ease off before the big day. You might be thinking at this point, brilliant, I've got more time on my hands. This means I can do more strength and conditioning, a bit more yoga, maybe go get a sports massage that I've been avoiding for ages. Wrong. <laughs> it's really best not to add in anything or double up on stuff that you've been doing already because you don't want to shock your body and put yourself at risk of injury. Or even worse, you don't want to end up with DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness on race day. So don't be doing any of that. I know I am definitely going to be guilty of wanting to do that but I'm going to try and refrain but then what do you do with all the spare time that you've got on your hands well in the last episode I asked you the lovely running channel community for any tips suggestions or hacks of what to do with your taper so here is a quick fire rundown of some tapering tips so tip number one is to train your brain <laughs> might sound weird but what I mean by this is if you struggle with motivation during a run I know I definitely battle with my brain when I'm into the depths of a long run so when you've got the spare time on your hands why don't you start working on mantras or little things that you can say to yourself to get you through that marathon and get you to the finish line my personal favorite is leave everything on the course that really fires me up gets me angry and makes me power through to the end speaking of brain training my brain is not feeling it today I spent all morning watching the London Marathon, which is so inspiring. But I feel like it can either make you go one of two ways. It can either make you go, yes, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get out and feel great and do it. It's gonna be amazing. Or what I'm feeling right now is, oh, those people are better than me. All of them are running a marathon and I can't do that. They're really fast. I'm not gonna be able to do it. Something's gonna go wrong. And that is where the mantras come in leave everything on the run i mean not right now i don't want to injure myself <laughs> but another one is that i loved that i saw at a half marathon the other week was uh wine now wine later that's a complicated spelling one <laughs> not really that complicated there are loads out there second piece of advice is you might feel sluggish and that is okay <laughs> this is such a great one and one that i can relate to already you might feel sluggish on some runs you might feel lazier or you might just lose a bit of mojo because you're not going out as much and your schedule isn't as hectic anymore and that is totally fine and that is totally normal as well so trust in the fact that that's gonna happen it's all okay and stick with that taper because it's gonna get you through to race day 
next tip is eat well and sleep well. <laughs> now again, this doesn't mean throwing the usual diet out the window and eating salad for breakfast, lunch and dinner, but pay attention to what you're eating. Treat your life as if you're preparing for that long run. So get a good balance of nutrients, minerals, proteins, carbohydrates, everything that you would do in the lead up to a long run. That's what you have time to do now in the taper and sleep. Sleep is so important. I have neglected the importance of sleep before and it's amazing how when I've only been getting six or seven hours a night, I can have an absolutely rubbish run. And then as soon as I get an extra hour, I'm singing and dancing, springing everywhere. I've got an extra spring in my step and the world just seems like a better place. And all I had to do was stop watching TV an hour earlier or set my alarm a little bit later. So eat and sleep, eat and sleep. Just coming up to 13K. I went out in the afternoon and I've forgotten that it's October now, so it's getting dark so early. It's quite sad. I guess that has been the best bit of training over the summer is that there's no time constraint on when you can go out for a run. But soon there will be which is another positive of the taper. I'm not gonna have to stress about fitting in the runs quite as much as I have been. The last tip might sound like an obvious one, but it is a very important one, and that is prepare for race day. Now, as I said, this might sound like the obvious. However, do you know what time your wave starts? Do you know where to pick up your race number? Does it get delivered to you? Do you have to pick it up? Do you know where the toilets are in the race village? All of these are questions that you're going to want to know the answer to well in advance of race day so do your homework i'm going to be treating this race like an exam and i want to pass so i'm going to make sure that i find out every single thing possible about this race before race day so that i'm well prepared and i'm not going to panic or stress on the day and speaking of race day that also means that i need to make a very important decision about a kit and what shoes i'm going to be wearing and I have made that decision. So quick, pause this video right now and have a guess as to which pair of shoes I'm gonna be wearing on race day. Have you had your guess? <laughs> it was an obvious answer. It, they are the Mizuno Wave Rider 25 shoes. I have absolutely loved training in these shoes. I've had four months of training in them and I haven't had a single blister. Absolutely love them. So they are my shoe of choice and I can't wait to strut around Amsterdam in these shoes. And if you like the look of them, it's your lucky day because we are gonna be giving away a pair of these shoes to one of you. All you have to do to enter is like this video, drop a comment down below. And if you're not sure what to comment, why don't you tell me what is your bucket list race? I'll go first. Mine is, it's one in Wales called Man vs Horse. I think I'd definitely be faster if I was on the horse, but sounds like quite a fun day out, to be honest. Not every run is going to go to plan, and that one for me was a bit of a blur. <laughs> I've watched, been watching London Marathon all day, um, feeling really inspired, wanting to go out and do a good session, have a big smile on my face, but in truth that was a bit of a rubbish one um my leg is still feeling a little bit sore from the half marathon that i did last week my knee is feeling like it's rearing its ugly head of being a little bit painful so i did 90 minutes and then stopped that is technically what was on the plan for today but um because i was resting after the half marathon i missed a 5k easy 10k at marathon pace 5k easy session which i wanted to do today but the extra 5k isn't going to do anything magic i know that i keep telling myself that um and that's why i've stopped but there's just that other half of my brain that's going you failed you haven't ticked off all the sessions for this week that is one big failure and it's not I know it's not but it's always nice to finish a session on a high 
and I don't feel on a high. <laughs> I feel annoyed at my left leg for not feeling great. It's fine to walk on. I don't think it's an injury. I think it's just four months of training taking its toll. <laughs> but hopefully two weeks of tapering and a lot of TLC and doing the right things will make sure that my leg is feeling good for marathon day. Fingers crossed. What it does mean is that I am nowhere near my house and I now have like a 3k walk home. Good. So I'm just walking home feeling a little bit sorry for myself if I'm totally honest but two weeks ago I felt great. Two weeks later I don't feel great. I'm sure in two weeks time for the marathon I'll feel good again. Here's hoping. <laughs> but all of the sessions are tapering off now. So next weekend it's only 60 minutes for my Sunday long run. And then in the week leading up to the race, usually I'd have 10K followed by eight times 100 meter strides. And on the last, it's only 30 minutes followed by four times 100 meters. So I'm gonna have all the time in the world to just sit around and stress about the race. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard of the word maranoia, marathon paranoia, but uh, I'm feeling that right now on a on a big level i feel like any any kind of pothole or bump in the road or like tree root that i could trip over you know usually i'd notice it but now i notice it and i'm very aware of like not doing anything that could injure myself in any way um <laughs> Can anyone else relate or is that just me being really paranoid? I don't know, but I can't believe it is almost time for the marathon. I know as Anna said in her marathon series, the kind of race day is that final victory lap. It's the payoff of all the hours and weeks and months of training that you've been putting in. And I am so excited to get out to Amsterdam and take my victory lap. I can't believe it's been 14 weeks of training. Feels like day one was only yesterday, but it also feels like this has been a very long time coming. <laughs> and I wanna say a massive thank you to every single one of you that has been commenting and showing your support for this series. I have honestly loved reading through every single one of your comments. And it really feels like we've built such a lovely community of cheerleaders, of people taking on races and wanting to cheer me on. And I've really enjoyed reading all of your comments and hopefully I've been a cheerleader for you as well. And if you've got races coming up, then best of luck. You've got this. Focus on everything that you've done so far. Trust in yourself that you've done everything to get yourself to that moment and leave everything on the course. <laughs> That's my mantra. Um, if you have any other words of support or words of wisdom for me for race day, please do leave them in the comments below and I will be reading every single one with all of the spare time that I have in tapering. And I will see you next time for the final instalment of Road to My First Marathon. It's time for race day. Let's do it.